Welcome to this episode of Truth Seekers, where His Grace Bishop Emilianos of Miloa will answer questions sent in by the youth with a member of the youth. Hello, Tess. Thank you for coming here today. Would you like to tell us a couple of things about yourself? I just recently finished my studies. I was doing my master's in law. So now I'm working full time as a lawyer, as a tax lawyer. Um, I also go to Ayus Gerasimus at Laika. That's my parish. I'm in the area. It's better. <laughs> Okay, so you're ready for a question? Yep. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens. In your own words, how do you think you can humble yourself before God? From what I understand, the main way to humble yourself in front of God is to be humble and have faith and trust in Him and trust that everything's going to work out in life, no matter what it is, even if it's something small, something big in life. It's just having faith and having trust that he knows what's best for me and he knows what the right path is. He will guide me through life and take me down the right path and give me everything that I need, not necessarily what I want and what's good for me. That's nice. So how would you describe humility? I think it's going through life and knowing your limitations and knowing that we don't need to be arrogant, we don't need to be show off, showing off, helping people. Um, doesn't matter who we are in life, we could be the CEO of a big company or in a big position. It's just knowing that we can help people in any small way, in any manner, no matter who we are in life. And taking the time out, taking our time out to help people in, in any way and show love and show care. Right. If you were to think about Jesus' life, what would you say that it was one of the most humbling moments of his life in I think one of the humbling moments would be at the Last Supper when Jesus washed the feet of all the disciples. Even though he was their teacher and was guiding them and show, showing them the way, he humbled himself and showed this is how we need to live life, no matter how big we are, no matter how important we are, we need to humble ourselves and act like a servant towards other people and show love and show care. He did that to give us an example of how we should be in life and how we should act. Um, I think that's the main reason why he did that. Do you think you will have the courage to do something similar? Yourself as a personality, the way you know yourself? I hope I would, especially with now that I've become more spiritual and now that I've got a lot of life experience, I hope, hope that I'd be able to do that because it is a difficult thing to do that and um, to humble yourself in that way, um, I hope I would. So when Jesus was his disciples' feet, he did it, as you said, to give them the right example, but he knew who he was. He knew where he's coming from and where he was going to. So when in our lives we know what God wants from us, we don't find it difficult to do things that they look humbling. As far as we know that this is the right thing to do to help others. And we can see this with the greatest example is the fools for Christ. They were doing things that they looked stupid to everyone, but they were sort of full of God's love when they were doing such things. And they didn't care for themselves. They only cared to give the right message in a funny way, in their way, to the others to tell them, look, you need to change. You need to do something. I'm not saying for us to do funny things in our environment, but what I'm saying is not to be embarrassed to do something that looks humiliating or humbling, because if there is a purpose behind our actions, then there is a reason for doing it. For them, doing something that looked humble was something they sort of tried to do. And, and when they were talking about themselves and they were saying that they're worth nothing, as we said, it was not a lie. But there is a knowledge behind this humility. Mm -hmm. The same way that Jesus knew who he was and where he was coming from and where he was going, but I think the most humbling thing for Jesus was not washing someone's feet. He created the whole human body. 
doesn't matter if it's feet or head or hands, it doesn't matter because it's still his creation. But I think the most humble thing for Christ was for the Son of God was to become human because he received something that was nothing compared to what he was. He was God and he became human. How would we put this in practice in our lives? What do you think? I think taking every opportunity to, to say yes to something when somebody asks you for something, mother, father, brother, friend, if someone needs help, even someone you don't like very much, taking the time out to help them and give them a hand with anything that they need. I think that'd be the best way to show humility. That's right. When we know, when we get to know ourselves, then when we talk about ourselves in such a way, it's not trying to be humble. It is what it is because we know, we know how God could see us, how we know how we could see ourselves through God's eyes. And of course, God is love and He will not judge us like this, but still we know that we're useless. Even if we only use 1% of what God has given us, this, this can still make a difference and we'll use any, any of our small efforts to help others. What do you think? I, I agree with, um, completely agree with what you're saying. I think I've got a question that stems from that. In showing humility, how do we let go of that anxiety when we're trying to help people? Uh, for instance, somebody comes up to you in the street, asks for money. Obviously, a lot of us aren't used to that because we haven't grown up going without, so we're not used to being around those kinds of things. How do we deal with the anxiety of trying to help people, trying to do what you can for them if you're not used to it? There's always a first time for everything and we can always make mistakes but we can always go back and think what would Jesus have done if he was me mm -hmm. and if you think in this way when you see someone you will see him with respect and if you put yourself in his shoes you will see him with um, positive feelings and this will help you empathize with him and, and help him in any possible way. But sometimes we have to be honest with ourselves as well. If someone who's close to us needs help, it could be in a spiritual way, it could be in a psychological way, it could be in a material way, we can help up to the point that this doesn't damage our spiritual life. Because if it does, then it means that it's too much for us. We can't handle it at the moment. And we have to be honest and we have to know our limitations and we have to know what we can do and what we can't do. But yes, this anxiety can go away when we try our best and we leave everything in God's hands. And then, even if what we've done is not perfect, at least our conscience is clean that we tried. And we will think about it and we will see if next time we can do something differently and we will adjust accordingly. It's natural to be anxious when we are facing something new and challenging. And it's natural to worry about others if they're close to us and we try to help them when we can't. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we have to understand that God loves our family more than us. And God loves the people that they need help and He brings them in front of us more than us. He created them and Jesus gave his life, his blood for them. We didn't. So he loves them all. Mm -hmm. But God can find a way because he is their creator and because he is full of love. He is love. He, he can do what we can't do. So if we try our best and leave everything in God's hands, I think this is the best approach. <laughs> Thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk with you today. That's okay. Yeah.